Long time no see. Hi, my name is Kara and I'm about to show you about three months, no, two months of knits. And it's a lot. Like, it's a lot. Um, yeah, I've been knitting a lot. I've been really inspired by the spring and spring knits. And I keep on getting, like, really fun yarns. And I'm like, oh, I have to make something really cool with this. And so I do. And so a lot of new designs. And I'm really, really, really excited for the spring and spring knitting because, I don't know, like, I'm just living in a place finally where, like, there is such thing as spring and there's been like a there should be a big change between like the winter and spring there hasn't really been like there hasn't really been snow in new york oh well and so i've just been waiting out the cold by knitting a bunch of fun knits and i think the last time that i did this was in november and that's not good and i kind of did like a midpoint check-in with like showing you guys what i made for my family for christmas and so if i miss anything or if i repeat anything i'm sorry I honestly have forgotten what I have and have not shown you so I'm just going to show you like everything that I've made in 2023 so far and just assume that I haven't shown it to you guys yet because I probably haven't because I've been very bad about doing these videos and so there's a lot to show you because there's been a lot of built up <laughs> so let's just get straight into it yeah and as you can see there's normally like a big old pile of sweaters right here there isn't that's because it's all on my floor right now so I can keep track of what I have and have not shown you and it's a really big pile normally. <laughs> so here we have the Love Grows sweater and the pattern's already out now. And here's the thing though, I forgot and I still haven't added the buttons for this because this is intended to be like a polo. And I just never got around to doing it because I honestly really like the fit without the buttons. And so if I add the buttons, then I'm gonna feel obligated to button it up. And honestly, I think that would be cute too. I'm just, I'm just being lazy. Like I have the buttons for it and I just haven't sewn them on. Yeah, but this is made in Santa's Garden Coast, Hell Double. I can't remember the colorway name. I feel like it's heavenly blue, but I don't think so. But I got this yarn, and I don't really normally knit with blue that often, and I really, really like this color. I think that it looks really nice with this design. It's a fun little lace front. It's like a polo. You knit it flat and partially in the round, and basically, like, I figured out how to do the construction of these types of sweaters where it's, like, a v-neck like a polo type vibe I don't know and I've just been obsessed with it since and so quite a few of these sweaters that I'm going to be showing you today have this like construction this fit and that's because I'm obsessed and I really really like it and this one was a bit of a tricky because I had never really installed like a button band like this before and I had to redo it a few times before I got like the fit that I liked but I am really happy with how this turned out and I just really like it. I think that it would look so cute with like enamel, ivory, pearly buttons. And I just haven't installed them yet. I don't know why. Maybe I'll do that after this video. I probably won't, but maybe I will. And yeah, like it's just really fun to throw on. And I've basically been knitting a bunch of sweaters recently that like look really cute, in my opinion, when you wear like a little like mock turtleneck underneath them. And I can tell you that this one looks really cute with a mock turtleneck underneath it. And I wore it to work and I got a ton of compliments on it. Yeah, and it's just not normally a color that I would work with, but I'm really happy that I did. Okay, this one might be really old and I might have already shown this one to you. I really can't remember, but I made a Valerie sweater for myself and it's in Malabrigo Chunky in, I think, just natural. And I just decided that I really needed a nice v-neck sweater because that would be a closet staple. And then I forgot about it, so I don't really know if it's closet staple, but it's fun. It's a deep v-neck. I can just wear it over anything. I would want to wear it with fun pants, though, because I'm not the type of person that like likes to wear like a fully neutral outfit. I gotta have something to make it a little bit fun, like some sort of statement piece, whether that's the pants, whether that's the top, whether that's like my giant Grinch coat. I don't know. I have this like long winter overcoat. I mean, it's long on me. I don't know how long it's supposed to be. And like, it literally looks like the Grinch. And so I would definitely like dress it up or down in some way. I don't know. Anyways, this one was fun. I thought that I would wear it a lot more than I did. And maybe it's because it's just a plain sweater. I'm like, eh, I don't really need to wear a plain sweater today. I'd rather wear one of my fun ones. Yeah, it basically like I've just been knitting a lot because I go into the office twice a week and it's fun to show off my knits there because when I work remotely, it's a lot less motivating because it's like, ah, nobody's going to see this or it's just like, I'd rather just like sit 
in my like old t-shirt on camera and that's fine because they can't even see the texture in person anyways but all my coworkers say that I get like my yarn shipped to the office and they're like Kara like how much yarn do you actually need and the answer is a lot okay here's a fun chunky one I have the chunky something good sweater and it's funny because like it's been so long since I've done one of these videos that most of the patterns and sweaters that I'm showing you today, like the patterns are already released and that's pretty unusual because normally I'm like, I should be showing you guys like my weekly check-ins or like some sort of check-in so that like you can see that like, oh, this one's in progress and it's in testing. No, it's been so long that most of the patterns are already out. And maybe I'll be better about this, but I promised that I would be better about doing these last time. So I don't want to make any more promises that I'm probably not going to keep. But at the very least, I will try to do it every few months so that it's not so crazy like this video will be, but who knows. Anyways, the Chunky Something Good sweater. This one I knit in like all one sitting and it was really fun. It took like exactly five skeins of Malabrigo Rasta in the colorway fuchsia. And this is actually a present for my friend because she really likes pink and she lives in New York so it's going to be kind of cold and a super chunky knit is great for New York. Like you can just wear it with like jeans and then like you're pretty good to go if it's like 40 degrees if it's like 30 degrees you should probably throw on another coat at least in my opinion in my experience but I also don't have that far of a commute to the subway so I'm not outdoors for that long but whatever this one has a really fun like folded over neck and I really like these side slits at the bottom just because to make it a little bit more fun I don't know when I was knitting this one I was like why make it a plain sweater like let's add like little like side seams side vents Oh god, what are they called? I don't know, but every so often, I've, I've been basically knitting a lot with like bulky weight yarn instead of super bulky weight yarn, and my origins of knitting are like all super bulky weight yarn, so like this is pretty refreshing. But every so often, I like do go back to knitting with super bulky yarn, and I forget how quickly it goes and how fun it is, and yeah. I think that my, I'm going to be trying to knit with more super chunky yarn in the future just because I have a ton and it's really fun. I really like the way that the designs come out. And yeah, so a lot of today is going to be bulky weight knits. Like 70% of them are like knit on eight millimeter needles, but maybe, maybe in the future, even though it's the weather is warming up, it'll go more down to 60% bulky weight knits and like some lighter weight and more super chunky weight. Okay, we have the spring fling sweater, and I really like this one. I did kind of knit it in more of a fall tone colorway, and that was unintentional, but I just got a new, like, colorway and I wanted to try it out. So this is in Santa's Garn Coast Yarn, of course, held double. And I really, really like Coast Yarn just because it's soft, it looks really pretty, it has, like, good stitch definition, and it doesn't shed that much, I think, like, compared to the Feeling Good Yarn. So Wool in the Gang Feeling Good Yarn and Coast Yarn are, like, very similar in my head and like the way that I've worked with them but I will say that Feeling Good yarn is way way softer but it does shed a lot more but the Coast yarn has a lot more fun colorways and I have a whole like discount code with like I don't know how to pronounce the name but I'll link it in the bio and you can get 15% off all of their yarns if you use code Kara15 I think that's a code I'll double check in the bio but yeah, that's where I get a lot of my coast yarn from, and it does ship all the way from Finland, but it ships really quickly. Like, I ordered some, I think, on Wednesday, and it got to my office at, on, like, a Friday, and I was like, cool, don't ever have to worry about running out of yarn. And there's this really weird thing that I have with coast yarn where, like, I'll always run out of yarn on the second sleeve. And I've gotten better about ordering it, but, like, if I ever, like, have some, like, coast yarn and pistachio in my stash and I start knitting a sweater, I will run out of that yarn on the second sleeve and then I have to order more. And, like, I think that it's because I order enough for, like, a sweater and a half. So, like, one sweater is good and then, like, the second sweater I just need more for the second sleeve. And it's driving me crazy. Anyways... But the spring fling sweater, I thought it was really fun because I've been playing around with the construction and I've been like, basically like in my free time, when I'm not knitting sweaters, I'm thinking about how I knit sweaters and I've been playing around with the construction of this one for a long time. And so this one's really fun because you knit the entire body without the collar 
and then you knit the collar separately and seam it on. And I don't really know what it's called officially, but like I use that like crochet technique to seam the two pieces together. And it was so easy. It's way, way, way better than like normal mattress stitch. But it does come out with like a, it, it does show a little bit of a line, like there's a bit of a seam, but I kind of like the seam anyways. It gives it like a fun little texture bit here. Oh, finally it came into focus. And so I knit the body and then I knit the collar separately and I really like how it turns out. It kind of gives like clown, romance, Victorian hero, whatever, but I really like it. And then what's fun about this one is that you have like the little sleeves as well. And so I have the spring fling cardigan, which has like a plain cuff, but I kind of like the ruffle one more. And I might as well show you the spring fling cardigan while I'm at it. And so this one's really fun because it has like the front tie bow and I really like that. And I honestly forgot to put in a button band on this one and then I decided, you know, this would be really cute with buttons. And this is like one of the few instances where like I actually installed buttons almost immediately after finishing the cardigan and yeah, so many other of my pieces like should have buttons but they don't, oh well. And so this is the same thing where like you knit the entire cardigan without the collar and then you add the collar in later. And I really liked it. I actually made this one before I made the spring fling sweater and it took me like two hours to knit the collar alone just because like there were so many increases and like it was just so much texture, but it was definitely worth it. But like trying or having to purl like 300 stitches kills me and it took me so long, but like for some reason, I also did it all while like standing up just because I was like filming it for a reel and then like I just never got around to sitting. And so it took me forever, but I really like it. So this is in Wool and the Gang, Feeling Good Yarn, Hell Double and Cameo Rose and super, super soft. I think that once I block it, it'll shed less and I just haven't gotten around to blocking it. But I really love this cardigan. I'm really excited for the, the weather to heat up enough where like I can just wear this and like no overcoat because it seems like it'd be weird with an overcoat right with the collar and everything it's definitely a spring knit like this is one of my knits that like i have to wait until it's spring to wear this and i'm really excited because it's i just think it's so freaking cute and i really like it um I actually just like casually wore this around with like sweatpants because like i liked it so much and like nobody was seeing me but i liked it yeah so this one took me forever and it was definitely worth it I love a top-down sweater because it's all knits and so in theory I should also kind of like top-down cardigans but because there's pearls, it takes me forever. At the very least the sleeves are knit in the round but it just takes me forever to knit a top-down cardigan and it's just not the same vibe as a top-down sweater. Most of the sweaters that I made this year are like all top-down and that's because I really like top-down constructions right now. I've always liked top-down constructions but I think that this year has been kind of crazy with all the top-down constructions. But yeah, Spring Fling Cardigan. Really like it. I think that I'll probably make this one in another color. I don't know what color yet. Maybe green, maybe white. I don't know. This just feels like it's a closet staple for spring and I'm gonna wear it a ton. Speaking of closet staples, and I think that you guys have seen this one because I actually did do a tutorial for it. I have the Spin Sweater. And this one's in Wool and the Gang Feeling Good Yarn in Lilac Powder Held Double. And this one is the one that started my obsession with the V-neck, polo, whatever you want to call it, construction. And it's just so fun. <laughs> I actually do wear this one casually a lot and I do need to block it soon because it does shed a bit. But I really, really love the color. It's so soft. It's so comfy. The v-neck is just like super flattering i think you can wear it with like a mock neck you can wear it with like a regular tank you could also just wear it as like a top itself i don't really do that i don't tend to do that i usually wear like a shirt underneath all of my sweaters no matter what just because in case i get hot in the office my desk is right by the radiator and it gets so hot so i often don't sit at my desk but you just need to be able to like layer and take it off and stuff but this is a sweater that like what as soon as I finished it like my sister and my cousin both texted me that they wanted one and I haven't gotten around to knitting them one I don't know if I will 
I guess my sister's birthday is coming up, so maybe I should. I just, like, haven't decided what color to make it in yet. Yeah. Yeah. I really love this sweater. I'm going to be keeping it. This is one of the ones that I'm going to keep in my closet instead of, like, selling. Because I... If you recall from the sweater pile, I need to keep the sweater pile in check and I need to sell some sweaters and just samples. And I tend to just sell the sweaters for like basically cost of yarn or like I don't really price my labor that much mostly because I'm just selling the samples to get rid of them and like just create space in my closet rather than like making them to sell because I tend to knit my size and just because like I like to make sweaters for myself and then I don't really have room to keep them all for myself so then I sell them. But this is a sweater that I think I will be keeping for a long time because I really really love it. It's really soft. I love the color and once I sell it I'm not going to make it again in the exact same color. Like I don't think I've ever repeated myself like repeating a pattern and the same yarn in the same colorway. And I don't like to do that because that just feels repetitive. Keep on repeating myself. But yeah, like if I were to sell this sweater, I don't think I'd ever like knit it in this exact colorway again. And I really like this colorway and this sweater. So I'm going to keep it. Now we have the Rhiannon sweater and this will be part of my spring drop part three. And it's knit in the round, top down, and it has like fun little twisted stitches. But obviously like the big piece is that like the center lace panel and it just looks so pretty and elegant. And it's named after the Rhiannon song by Fleetwood Mac. I just really, I just felt like the vibes were good. But I have been getting more and more obsessed with twisted ribbing because I think it looks so elegant. Like, look at that. It's so pretty. And it's not like super crazy for me to knit in twisted ribbing. I, I know that some people don't like it a lot, but like it's not too bad when you knit continental or at least you do continental knits. I don't really like doing like purl through the back loop because that drives me crazy, but knitting through the back loop, not too bad. Purling through the back loop, bad. But that's why you do half twisted ribbing. You only do the knits through the back loop. It took me actually like a week to make this one just because I kept on getting distracted by other things like I find that once I finish doing the increases for the body for top down sweaters, I kind of lose interest in the piece because from that on it's pretty easy. And then I had to convince myself like no no no, like knitting in the lace stitch as well is interesting, it's difficult, keep going. But then trying to motivate myself to finish the sleeves because they were just plain stockinette, that took a while. Yeah, so this one took like very little time to knit itself but a lot of like mental time to motivate. Don't know why I said that that way. But this is also knit in Santa Scar and Coast Health Double in like light gray, I want to say. I don't know. It's not my normal gray. It's a little bit more cool tone, a little bit more sagey, and I really do like it, and I think it fits this sweater really well. Like this would look really cute, I think, in like white as well, but I actually don't really have any Santa Scar and Coast in white. I should fix that. I do have it in Feeling Good Yarn. But I didn't have enough at the time. Like I'm always kind of running through all the like the, my coast yarn and my feeling good yarn. I'm always like, I get a bunch and then I use a bunch. And so like I have like not enough for a full sweater and I don't want to like wait to order it because then I'll run out of yarn and then I lose motivation and momentum. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Okay, speaking of knitting in white yarn, of course I knit this one in white, but it was a smaller top, so it didn't take as much as like a full sweater. Although this one, it did take a lot of yarn because of the ruffles. So this is my Darcy sweater, and it's with the short sleeve version, and it's probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever knit, because look at the ruffles. When I wear it, I feel like a pirate or a Victorian, another like Victorian love interest, whatever. I feel like I should be in Bridgerton or something. But it's also named after Mr. Darcy because it gives Pride and Prejudice. There's a lot of things it gives. Um, yeah, I just like became really obsessed with ruffles and I was like, oh, you know what's fun for spring? Ruffles. And so I knit this one and I really like it. I think it's going to be so fun for the spring. It's, again, one of the more ridiculous things that I've ever knit. I think it's slightly more ridiculous than the long sleeve version and I'll show you guys that one in a second. But I really like it. It's really soft. It's Will in the Gang Feeling Good Yarn in Ivory White Held Double. 
and yeah there's like some fun elastic at the top to make sure that it stays like close to the neck so that you really do look like you're wearing like some sort of ruffle collar yeah it's ridiculous and i love it and i'm really glad i made it and i'm really excited to wear it with like fun pants or like a skirt i don't know i'm excited to style all of these pieces honestly instead of just like wearing them always to work but right now it's still cold enough where you have to wear pants or like leggings or tights i don't really own any tights though so okay here's the darcy sweater with the long sleeve version and as I hold it up and show it to you, I've been told it looks like a jellyfish or an octopus. And it kind of is, with this color, is giving like Squidward from Spongebob. I'm not mad about it. Again, I know that this is one of the more ridiculous things that I've ever knit. And I really like it. And this is the original. And this is in Santa's Garden Coast and Turquoise. It's held double, obviously. I can't remember the exact colorway. And I've just like had this particular yarn in my stash for a while. And I finally got around to using it. So this one also has like a fun little ruffle like sleeve and for the longest time I was like could not figure out if I wanted to make this one the short sleeve version or the long sleeve version and then like I just figured out logistically that like oh I actually have enough of this yarn that I should make it a long sleeve version and not the short sleeve version because if I made it the short sleeve version I would have enough yarn left over to not make anything basically so I just wanted to use it more yarn so that's why I made it long sleeve and then that triggered me to make the short sleeve version and it's funny because you can actually start to see the sweater pile going up you can start to see it in camera now it's making its way back up to what it normally is yeah and I actually went out of my way to go and get some elastic for the neckline for this one and I'm showing you guys all these sweaters basically out of order but the Darcy sweater pattern is out now and you can get it and you can make your own super ridiculous sweater I don't know I should block it I will soon, maybe. I don't really block most of my sweaters just because I don't really have the space to wait for them all to dry because it takes like two to three days for a sweater to dry and I finish sweaters in like two to three days. So if anything, there should always be something blocking and drying on my floor, but my apartment's so small that I don't really want to do that to myself, but maybe I will. Eh, we'll see. A black knit but it wasn't for me it was a present for somebody else though so this is a chunky something good sweater as well I showed you guys the other one in Malabrigo Rasta and this is in loopy mango mohair so soft in black and it's a present for somebody that's why I think no this isn't my first ever like black knit but it's the first one in like two years maybe and I don't know I just like knitting in colorful colors and it's actually difficult to knit in black because I forgot that. It's hard to see the stitch, especially black mohair. Kind of a nightmare, but fortunately I just like put myself on autopilot and try not to like go by like instinct and like muscle memory rather than like sight as much because it's hard to see those stitches. Anyways, yeah, it was just a present for somebody else and I have yet to give it to her because I keep on forgetting to give it to her even though I see her pretty regularly. I, I need to give it to her because I need the space in my closet. It doesn't take up that much room, but like it all it all piles up eventually. Yeah, I don't have much to say about this one because it's just like a black sweater. <laughs> I need to go faster. We have so much more of the pile to go through. So here is the Cecilia sweater. Knit in Wool in the Gang Feeling Good Yarn Held Double in Seashell Beige. And yes, I added the buttons to this one because I love it. This is probably going to be another of my closet staples. It's just like a textured polo sweater and it's in like a neutral color and it's not what I normally knit, I'll admit it, especially because it's like a neutral color, but I just love the texture so much and I'm really excited to wear this one out. <sighs> I'm also like writing the pattern for this one took like so much time just because I really wanted to get it right and it's in testing right now so I don't even know if I got it right but I really like this sweater and I think I'm going to be making a cardigan version of this one just because I really like the texture as well and I don't really have much else to say other than the fact that I really love this sweater I think it looks really cute it's going to look really great in the office 
This is when I would wear a neutral outfit. Like, I would wear it with a mock turtleneck, obviously, in like cream pants maybe, maybe my like cream corduroys and I would look really cute and I really love this sweater. It's amazing. I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but this one makes me really happy. This one took me months to finish for no clear reason. So it's the Diamond in the Rough sweater and I made it in Sinus Garden Coast, held double in bright green, Kelly green, spring green, don't remember which one it is. And for some reason it took me like three months to finish the second sleeve. Don't know why, just did. And when I picked it back up, of course I messed up so I had to frog it all back and then start over and then it took me like less than an hour to finish. But yeah, I finished it and I wore it out and I really, really liked it. I wore this really cute outfit with it, not to, again, toot my own horn, but I really liked the outfit. I'll show it to you guys here. Yeah, I really want to make more of these Diamond in the Rough sweaters, but honestly, I already have one and I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep this one. It's just a fun texture and for some reason it just took me forever to finish the sleeve for this one, but I think it's because even though there was like a lace stitch in the sleeve so it wasn't just plain stockinette i was like eh, too easy i can move on to other projects that would take more brain power for me at least and then i just never finished it and then it was sitting on my windowsill for like months and months and months until i looked at it and was like this will take me like less than an hour to finish i should just finish it and i did sometimes i get really productive and i will do things like that where i'll finish a bunch of sweaters like i think that this was part of the period of time where i finished like five sweaters in 36 hours but that's mostly because they were all like on their second sleeves and I was like, Kara, you just gotta finish these. Like, just please, please do it. And I did. So I also finished the sweater number five in Santa's Garden Coast held double in pistachio, light pistachio, I don't know. But this is a sweater pattern that I struggled with and I first bought this pattern when I was new to knitting like I want to say a few months in because I was like this is gorgeous it's so so beautiful and then trying to figure out the short rows I remember sitting on my floor in LA and working on this pattern for like four to five hours straight just trying to figure it out and having to keep on frogging and then like figuring out how to do lifelines just because I was like I don't want to keep on redoing the ribbing of the neckline and I think I saw a Ravelry like project somebody in their notes said like the Working on the yoke made me feel like I was illiterate and I was like, yeah, it honestly does. And I don't know if it's just like a poor translation or just like my own unfamiliarity with like short rows and also because you're doing short rows with mock fisherman's rib. Like I did this sweater again for my roommate in pink and I have a picture of it. I'll show you guys a picture of it here because I gave it to her so I don't have it with me now. And I did that one in like an evening. Like I don't think that it's like that the pattern's written poorly. I think I was just getting really frustrated and freaking out. And I honestly, I think I have trouble reading other people's patterns now just because like in my head, I'm just thinking about how I would construct it. And this one, I was like, I have no idea how I construct it because I've never done a short row before, but I finally did it. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like the sleeves are so, so fun. They're kind of ridiculous. It's hard to wear a coat over this one because the sleeves are so big, but definitely worth it. Really love this sweater. It did take me two years to finally figure out how to make it and when I did make it I am really really happy that I figured it out because I love this sweater. It's so pretty. Yeah and I also ended up having to like use the notes that I wrote because I think at one point I did figure it out like two years ago when I was doing my first attempt and then I got frustrated or I just like lost enthusiasm for it and just never ended up finishing that sweater in particular and then I tried it again in like 2022 and I think I figured it out, but then I was like, eh, and I just never finished it. And so I finally finished this one on the third attempt. And then I got excited about that, and I made the whole second sweater again, because I was like, I know, short rows. Yeah, but I really like Mock Fisherman's Rib, and I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but, like, there's a lot of Mock Fisherman's Rib in machine knit sweaters. But what's interesting is that they usually have, like, the wrong side showing. I mean, wrong side in terms of, like, this sweater. 
like you can see that this one has like a bumpier texture and that'll be the side that most like machine knit sweaters will show but i kind of like this one side the right side of this sweater more like i think it's neater i think it's a little bit more even it's a little more elegant in my opinion and it's really funny because like like if a friend is wearing like a mock fisherman's rib machine knit sweater i always ask them to like turn it inside out so i can like inspect the stitch and it's always the other side, the bumpier texture side showing. And I don't know if you guys have an opinion of like Mock Fisherman's Rib, which side you prefer, but I just prefer like the less bumpy side more. But maybe I'll be like converted to think liking the bumpier texture side more. I don't know. <laughs> so here's a cardigan where I never added the buttons, and it's the Little Things cardigan. And it's in Wool of the Game, Feeling Good Yarn, Held Double, and it's in Powder Blue, I believe. And this is actually one I'm showing you guys out of order because I did the sweater version first. And then somebody was like, like, this would be amazing if you made it in a cardigan. And I was like, let me do that. So then I knit up the cardigan version really quickly and I like, threw it into the same tester call. And recently I've been pretty good about like doing double features, if that makes sense. If that's the right word to call it. We're like... For the spin sweater, I managed to get the bulky weight version pattern and the chunky weight version of the pattern in the same, like, drop. And I was really proud of that. And this one I'm proud of because, like, I did the sweater and the cardigan in the same drop. And I haven't been able to do any of that recently for this latest drop, but I was just proud of myself for that one. So anyways, like, I made this one in, like, a day. Like, literally as soon as somebody mentioned, like, oh, this would be cute in a cardigan version. I was like, let me do that. And of course I didn't add the buttons, though. And I have, again, like these cute little like ivory enamel, I don't know what to call them, buttons to add to it. And I just haven't done that yet. Don't know why. But top down cardigan, really, really cute. Yeah. So I showed you the cardigan version. Let me show you the sweater version of the little thing sweater. And it's in Wool in the Gang, Feeling Good Yarn in Buttercup Yellow, held double. And yeah, I just reordered a bunch of this yarn because I really, really like this shade. Like, I don't really know if I wear that much pastel yellow, but I think it looks really cute. So I'm going to get more. <laughs> and this is a fun textured stitch. It's like smocked and it looks like really elegant in my opinion. And I really like it. Yeah, this one took me like less than a day too. I just like was look, flipping through a knit stitch book and I was like, ooh, I like that. And did I knit a gauge swatch? No, I knit a gauge swatch after I finished the sweater. Don't know why, sometimes I do that. It's a bit risky to knit an entire sweater or just like start knitting a sweater with a stitch that you've never done before. You don't even know what it'll look like. And I actually do that a lot. It's pretty risky, but it's been working out for me so far. I don't recommend doing it, but... I think that like I at this point have enough experience with like the yarn the exact needle size and everything to like know what I can and cannot do with certain stitches and like certain like constructions but I don't recommend doing that because it is pretty risky and if I ever have to frog anything I'm gonna get super annoyed <laughs> I don't even put in lifelines I definitely should And here is my the spin sweater the ultralight version so this is a worsted weight and this was the first time in a very long time that i've knit with five millimeter needles it took me forever and what took me forever is that i ran out of yarn on the second sleeve but like the cuff and so i was like i had like this much left and i had to go all the way to the upper east side back to the any needle point and company to buy more of this yarn and this is Haiku Simply Natural, and it's like this fun like silk, bamboo, wool, I don't know, it's really soft and I really like the color and I was like staring at it for a while and I was like, yeah, you should get it. And so I obviously bought enough to buy, make a second sweater because I was like, if I'm gonna go all the way to the Upper East Side, which isn't easy to get to, I live on the West Side and I think it's hard to get from the West Side to the East Side of the island. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Maybe it's fact. Maybe you guys feel that way too. But getting to the Upper East Side was not easy. And I really like how it turned out. Yeah, this will probably be... I'll keep this one, I think. Or I'll give it to my sister. Because maybe she'll like this color. 
but I'm gonna have to block it and make it longer because she has a longer torso than I do. And she did actually request it. Maybe, yeah. Two birds, one stone. Yeah. I like it. I was just really annoyed with myself for running out of yarn literally on the second cuff. The second cuff. Not even the second sleep. Like, the second cuff. And, then, like, I debated with myself about whether I should just, like, unravel the other sleeve a little bit and, like, take off an inch just to, like, get that much more yarn. But then I was like, eh, that'll be more effort because you have to unravel it and then re-knit that sleeve a bit. Yeah, so this one actually took me, like, a month to finish because I didn't want to go get more yarn. But I did, eventually, and now it's finished. Here is one of my favorite knits of the year so far. It's the Astoria sweater, and it's knit in Santa's Garden Coast and Pistachio Health Double, and it's just, like, an amazing, not to toot my own, but it's just, like, a fun cable sweater, and it's a boxy fit. And it's just super flattering. It's super chill. I really, really love this sweater. Of course, I ran out of yarn on the second sleeve. That happens to me literally all the time. It happens to me more than I care to admit. And it's a bit embarrassing how often it happens to me. But it does give me an excuse to order a bunch more yarn. Do I even need an excuse at this point? No. And I am working on a chunky version of this one as well. But I just love this sweater and this is one where I think I will also keep this one like I'm not gonna sell it I'm gonna keep it for myself because I love the color and I love the construction and I love the fit of it and I actually wore it to knitting vogue live vogue knitting live that's it and I got a bunch of compliments on it and that was a really fun I like just went to it I won one day I woke up and it was a Saturday and I was like checking my Instagram feed and I was like oh this is like a cool convention that's going on oh it's today Oh, it's like really close by my house. Like I was able to walk to it and I did. It was pretty fun. And I bought a bunch of yarn that I didn't necessarily need, but it was really fun to go. And it was kind of like overwhelming at the same time, but I kind of, I, I just wore my headphones and I just like walked around and the headphones like helped me like not get overwhelmed by all the sounds and the people and everything. But it was also really fun because like everybody was wearing their knits and you can see like there's a bunch of people around you that could appreciate the fact that that was hand knit and that you'd made it yourself because I feel like when you're walking around the average person doesn't necessarily know that you knit that sweater yourself and you're not gonna just yell yeah I knit this myself to like everybody you meet I actually feel kind of weird about that when people like compliment me on my sweaters I don't really know to be like yeah thank you I knit it myself I just go thank you because I don't want to get into like the whole thing where it's like oh you knit it just feels like bragging and you definitely can brag about the knits that you made but I'm not gonna brag to like the random person in my office I'll brag to my friends but not strangers <laughs> here is the chunky version of the spin sweater it's made in Malarbiga Rasta in almond blossom and I love it it's so fun when I get cold I kind of just grab this one at the top of the if it's at the top of the sweater pile I'll just grab it and wear it around the house apartment it's not a house yeah this one took me like no time at all it's a super chunky knit love it I think that the only barrier for me to knit in super chunky yarn more is the fact that I have a lot of like Rasta yarn and that means that I have to skein it up and I get super procrastinating about like skating up yarn just because like it's a whole process where I have to like set up the swift and then I have to make sure that the my electric skein winder doesn't like fall over or anything and yeah I think that's part of the reason why I've been knitting so much with like feeling good yard and coast it's just because both of those yarns come like already skeined up and I can just like grab it from the center already rather than having to skate it up and I have like a lot of Malabrigo yarn in my stash it's just like finding the motivation to skate them all up is what makes it so that I don't know about that as much and I think I just need to sit down one day and just skein them all up, but then that makes it more difficult to store them as well, just because it's easier to store them in hanks with how, like, the shelving in my room is set up. And I even have an electric skein wonder. I don't know why this is like this, but it is. Now I have the Better Days cardigan, and this is a pattern that's in testing now. It's in Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn, Held Double, and Latte Lover in pink. I don't remember what pink. I'll put it in the description. And this one took me no time at all. It's actually one of my first... It, it is my first super chunky top-down cardigan pattern. And I'm going to be making more because 
it's so easy it's chill even though there are pearls I find that doing the pearl side when I'm working with super chunky yarn is pretty quick and it's relaxing because I actually go back to English style knitting then yeah this is another example of me putting the buttons on almost immediately and I think it's because I had these really cute like pink enamel ivory I can't know don't know what it's called buttons Ooh. You can see my nails. I have like the Hailey Bieber like glazed donut nail and I really love them. By the way, just gonna take a second to brag about them right now. Yeah, I love my nails right now. Yeah, this is gonna be a closet staple. It's super comfy. It's oversized. I loved it. I made it like a medium. And I really like working with the fluff yarn or like an Aran Waite mohair held double just to make it bulky. Because it gives it that like really fluffy, airy vibe. And it takes like no time and I really like how it comes out. Yeah, the pattern will be coming out later this month. I also have a Better Day sweater light version and this is in Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn in Baby Blues, I think, and Wool and Gang Take Care of Hair in Winter White. And if you're asking me about comparing the two yarns, I will say that the Take Care Mohair is softer, it is more expensive, and the Hip Knit Shop Fluff yarn is very similar. It's slightly less soft, but the colorways are really, really, really fun. And I got a bunch of the Hip Knit Shop Fluff yarn gifted to me, and so that's why I've been working with it a bunch, because I really love all the colors that they come in. This is a staple as well. I don't know if I'll sell it or if I'll keep it, because I really like how this one turned out, and like, I love a big striped sweater. I have a bunch of them now or I just keep on knitting them because I really like how they look and yeah it's a top-down construction so it took like no time at all and talking to you about this makes me want to knit another one or at the very least I think that I'll make the Better Days cardigan light version very very soon. We're getting to the end. My floor you can almost see it now. <laughs> now we have the uh, take it or leave it sweater and it's knit in Wool in the Gang Feeling Good Yarn in Eucalyptus Green, held double. And this was a sweater that I was trying to channel like my inner Ula Johnson. Is that how you say it? I don't know. But I really, really, really love that brand. I love going on their website just to see like what sweaters they're making because when I look at like designer brands, often with the sweaters, I'm not super impressed by the construction or like the materials that they use. Like one time I went to Bergdorf, Bergdorf Goodman's with a friend and I, we were just like window shopping and we were like, I was like checking out all the sweaters. Sorry, that's my dryer, it's very loud. But we were checking out all the sweaters and I was like checking the materials, looking at the construction, like taking inspo pics and stuff. And I'm not usually super impressed with it just because I'm like, oh, like the cost of materials for this one is like $60 and they're selling it for like a thousand. Like this is ridiculous. And I will say that with Ula Johnson, I am always very impressed. I actually haven't gone to the Ula Johnson store yet in New York, and I really want to. It's on my list of things to do. But I think that they make use really good materials. At least it's like 100% wool, at the very least. And I always think about, like, how difficult would it be for me to make this sweater? And with a lot of designer brands, it's not super difficult. With Ula Johnson, it seems really difficult. And so, like, I think that their sweaters are worth the price. I have not purchased them. But, yeah, my policy is with, like, store-bought sweaters or like machine knit sweaters like basically buying sweaters and like ones that I haven't made is if it would drive me crazy to make it I'll let myself buy it and if I can make it myself I won't let myself buy it and so this is my attempt to kind of make something like Ula Johnson and I think I did a pretty good job it's not quite the same like super bulky look I think that if I made it in a bigger size with a thicker yarn then I would get closer and I think I might do that soon because I really like it, and I really like Ula Johnson. Yeah, I really want to go to that store and check things out. And here is the Lights Up sweater. It's in Santa's Garden Coast, in like heathered oatmeal or something, I don't know. And this is part of my phase of knitting where I really, really, really was into baubles, as you can see, and yeah. I knit this one mostly at work actually and then it was really fun because like I knit it mostly at work and then like I wore it to work like two days later like I, I was working on it on a Tuesday and then I wore it on a Thursday and people were like wasn't that the sweater you're working and I was like yes it was 
and yeah it was pretty fun to do that and it's not really in a color that I would normally wear that much I'm not super into wearing neutrals but I really like the texture of it and talking about all these bubbles makes me think that I'm gonna be knitting with bobbles again soon I'm gonna try to look around and figure out what I can make with bobbles because this is getting me into a bobbly mood <laughs> Here is the Brady Bunch sweater, and this is the light version, and it's the Santa's Garden Coast in light olive green. I don't know. But basically, I really, really, really like this one, and I really love the construction of it. And I had a Something Good sweater that I'll show you guys a picture of. I love this one, and I brought it to LA with me, and then I didn't have enough room with me to bring all of the things I wanted to bring back to uh, from LA. And so I left it behind, and my mom's wearing it a bunch now, so at least it's getting put to good use. But I was upset, and I was like, I want this sweater, but I would not let myself knit the exact same sweater in the exact yarn and colorway. So my compromise was to make the Brady Bunch light sweater in the exact same colorway. And now I have this sweater, and I do need to block it to make it a little bit longer. But I'm happy with how it turned out. And one of my coworkers, one of my more observant coworkers, actually was like, don't you have a sweater in that exact same colorway? And I was like, yes, but this one has cables. So it's so much of my something good sweater, I know. But I don't have that something good sweater and I can't take it away from my mom now because she seems to really like it. So this is my compromise. I actually knit this one in like six hours. It was like no time at all. And this is what reignited my love for some, or for super chunky yarn. So this is my chunky little thing sweater. Funny name, I know, but it's the chunky version of my little thing sweater. So it has a really fun texture. It's a Malabrigo Rasta in the colorway ivory, I believe. Yeah, I finished this one, then immediately wore it to work and somebody told me it looked like quinoa. And I was like, you're right, it does look like quinoa. And it's just like, I really love Rasta. This is like, I was super motivated to work with a bunch of Rasta. I don't know why, but I think I had like a skate of this one lying around and then I decided to do the yoke of the sweater. And then I was like, well, I don't want to just like not finish the sweater. So then I got into like a frenzy of like skating up a bunch of the Rasta. And so I have a bunch sitting around and waiting for me for different projects, which will lower the barrier of me like not wanting to knit with Rasta because it's all in hanks. I don't know where I'm going with this. Guys, we're almost done. <laughs> my last sweater and my second to last piece, and I'm not gonna show you guys any whips today because I'm getting tired and I'll just finish them and show it to you guys next time. But anyways, I have the sky sweater for you. And this is a Noro Ido, and I actually have already blocked this one. And I really like this sweater. Um, it's kind of serendipitous. It was not intentional, basically, that these sleeves match up in, like, the uh, stripiness colorways. That was purely coincidental, and it was a beautiful accident because I really like that it turned out that way. I usually don't really care about that, especially with self-striping yarn, because if I cared about that, it would drive me crazy because I would have to do a lot more work to, like, make sure that it matched up. But it worked out this way, and I knit most of this actually on the plane ride back from San Francisco. I went to San Francisco for like a weekend just to visit a bunch of friends, and that's just like the memory that I'll associate with this one. Um, yeah, it's actually knit in reverse so that you don't have to do a bunch of purling in the round. So you knit in the round, and then you just like flip it inside out, and then you have a fun little reverse stockinette sweater. Yeah, I really like how this is turning out. I'm actually knitting another one in a different colorway of Nora Idol because I really, really liked how it turned out and I had another skein of it. Yeah, reverse stockinette is underrated and I'm trying to knit more sweaters that way. Okay, my final, final piece is a chunky something good top and it's in Wool in the Gang Crazy Sexy Wool in Wonderland green? Is that what it is? That sounds right. And I just love, love, love this yarn. I'm about to order a bunch more because I think it's so, so pretty. I love this colorway. It's going to be so good for spring. And I timed it. This one took me exactly 38 minutes to finish. I just sat down and did not move until I had finished it. <laughs> 
and now I want to make the matching cardigan because I don't know it's been a while since I made any like chunky something good or sorry it's not chunky something it's a chunky game set match I don't know what I'm saying it's a chunky game set match top and I'm gonna make the chunky game set match cardigan for it soon I just might have to order more yarn because I only bought five skeins of this yarn and I think I need about six I can always make an extra small cardigan but I'd rather make a medium cardigan so I'm just gonna order another skein of yarn yeah it's it's the weather isn't super warm yet but I'm pretending that it is getting warmer so yeah <sighs> okay that was a lot I don't even know how many sweaters that was it seemed like too many I would say that I would do this these videos more often but I can't promise anything I, I procrastinate on YouTube videos and YouTube editing of these videos like I don't even know how long it'll take me to edit this video hopefully not too long because <laughs> if it takes me too long then I won't want to film the next one and then it'll be another pile up and it'll just be a vicious cycle but I'm glad you guys can start to see like the sweater pile growing as I was doing this video I thought that was kind of funny yeah thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for supporting me and my patterns hope you have a lovely rest of your day and happy knitting see ya